Hello, welcome to the Site of Eva webinar on how to acquire hyperspectral data. To begin acquiring hyperspectral data, we use the NV4.8 software. So by clicking on the NV4.8 icon on the desktop, now we open up the NV software. This is the main NV tab. In this control tab, we have lots of different options. Over here to the right, we have Cytoviva Hyperspectral Microscope. For this, we click on this menu item and activate Cytoviva HSI Microscope Controls. After a couple of seconds, the Microscope Control dialog opens. And here we see quite a few options, such as objective magnification, exposure time, file name, field of view, and some setting options, which we'll go over in a bit. So here on the microscope, I actually have a slide with some 50 nanometer gold particles, and they are focused here at about 60x. So what I'm going to do is select my magnification, which here is 60x. The exposure time defaults to 250 milliseconds. Now, this can be changed, and we don't really know exactly what the best exposure time will be yet until we do a preview. So here I'm going to choose a file name. So I click choose, navigate to where I want to save this file. I'm going to save it to the desktop for now. And I'm going to name it AU 50 nanometer test 1. Here in the field of view, we have some choices, which I'll explain more about this in a second after we see the preview window. But you have the option to either do what's called a full scan, a half scan, a quick scan, or a number of lines set by the user. So if we do what's called a preview, and I'm going to hit the preview button, we actually are getting a preview of the hyperspectral data from the camera live. And I'll explain a little bit about this preview window. So first off, we notice that there's an X and Y axis. Well, here, the way the system works is there is a CCD camera mounted to your spectrograph. This camera has a chip that has pixels that are about 1396 by 1396 pixels across. So this camera is seeing pixels in the X and Y axis. Here, we're only seeing the X pixel location. X in this case is spatial. If I move the stage, we actually see these particles move over from left to right. The Y direction in this case represents a couple of things. One over here on the left, we see counts. This is the dynamic range of the camera. This is the intensity. And if you see in the top of this window, it says wavelength, and it gives a wavelength, and it also says max intensity. And this number is changing. It's dynamic because it's live. Over here on the left, these counts represent the dynamic range of the camera, like I said. This is a 14-bit camera meaning the dynamic range of this camera have numbers that go from 0 to about 15,000. So here, this is showing you the intensity of these particles in the X location. The way this works is the camera sees the spatial direction in the X and the spectral direction in the Y, and then the software later flips the data to give you X and Y as spatial and what's called Z, a Z profile, is spectral. So here we see these particles, and they're, res they're represented as these sort of wisps, these thin lines of light. And if I put the cursor at the bottom of the preview window, you'll notice it says wavelength 404, with an intensity at this point of 360 roughly. It's changing a little bit. But what's happening here is if I move this cursor up, 
You see the wavelength changes. Now I am at 538. I move it up some more, and I've gone up to 710. And eventually, you'll go all the way up to 900, and then beyond the detectors or the spectrograph's wavelength range of over a thousand nanometers and this isn't the unknown that means it's not calibrated to go past a thousand nanometers because the spectrograph in this case is a specum v10e and it goes from 400 to a thousand nanometers now another thing you'll notice about these lines is they're very thin this means that the particles are actually in focus so i'm going to put my hand on the microscope find focus knob and actually make these particles go out of focus. And this is what out of focus data looks like. It's, it's fuzzy, it's blurry, there's no borders or any kind of definition to these particles that we're seeing under the microscope. So as I focus back down, we see these lines get very, very tight, very well defined. This represents in focus information. So another thing here to remember is that on the actual microscope, there's a slide bar on the trinocular head. There's actually a diagram, and there's a bar that shows you when it's pushed all the way in, and I just pushed it in, the data goes away. This is because all of the light from the sample is going to the eyepieces. If you pull it out halfway, it goes to the eyepieces, but it also goes to the camera as well pull it all the way out, it's all going to the camera. And then above the trinocular head of the microscope, you have what's called a dual camera port. And on your system, you probably have some kind of optical camera on the top, and then coming out of the back, you'll have the spectrograph and CCD combination. So again here, make sure that you're seeing your data in the preview window. Make sure to check the slide bar on the trinoc head and then also check the slide bar on the dual camera port. If you go to the left, the data goes away because now all the light is being routed directly up to what I'm assuming is the optical camera on your system. And then to the right, directs the light to the back. And that would be the spectrograph. So check these things. If you don't see this in the preview window, preview window what you're seeing, if it looks like this, nothing but static on a TV sort of. Uh, if you're seeing that, make sure to check the the path of the light and make sure that all of the slide bars are in the appropriate positions. So now I'm going to talk a second about these intensities. Um, what is an acceptable intensity? Well with this camera my general rule is that you want your intensities to be over a thousand. Anything below that could be considered noise or too noisy, not noise, but just too noisy. Obviously, going above the camera's dynamic range will make the camera clip. And I can show you what this looks like. I'm going to open up the iris on the objective. This is a 60x oil objective. It has a, a variable iris on it, which changes the numerical aperture. I'm going to open up the iris almost to the point of exceeding the numerical aperture of the condenser. And you see these flat lines here at the top. This is clipping. And if I put the cursor over the very bright white light here from the particles, we see max intensity is 16,383. This is the maximum dynamic range of the camera. So just make sure that when you're dealing with particles or cells or tissues that are very bright, obviously brighter than just individual particles, uh, make sure that you're not getting these... Uh, these what I call chopped tops on these peaks here, meaning if you see something that looks like this on the top of a peak, it's it's clipped, it's, it's too exposed. So to adjust this, what I can do is I can change my exposure time here. So let's say, for example, you wanted more intensity than, than this. We would hit cancel. We would go back over to this exposure time tab, and it defaults to 250 milliseconds, but we could take it up to 400 milliseconds. So I'm going to change this to 0.4, hit preview, 
And now we have counts that are probably almost double what we had before. So if this is what you wanted to see in terms of intensities, you could change the exposure time. So again, on the preview window, X is the X pixel location on the camera. This represents spatial. Y represents not only the intensity counts here as these red peaks, but also spectrum as we can see this wavelength changes as I move the cursor around this window. So with that being said, we can see that most of the data here seems to have a bright area right about 560 nanometers or so, which is typical. But this particle here almost seems to have a peak here and then another intensity peak here at about 684. So this can kind of give you an idea of spectrally what your material is doing. So now I'm going to do a scan. And I want to talk a little bit about this field of view here because I have full field of view checked. This full field of view represents a full scan, meaning how many pixel rows can be captured. So I'm going to explain something. I said earlier that there was about 1,400 pixels by 1,400 pixels on this chip. Um, but what's actually happening is the camera is put into what's called a binning mode, meaning instead of the camera chip having 1,400 by 1,400 pixels, each block of 2 by 2 pixels is being lumped into make one pixel. This is called binning. So imagine you have a block of two pixels by two pixels making a four pixel cube. That gets turned into a single pixel, and that's called binning. This is used to capture more light. So this system was put together and built to have two by two binning for the spatial axis. So actually one pixel is really four pixels. And so what's happening here is this is being used to capture more light. And a full scan in this case, instead of being 1,396 lines, it's getting cut down to about 696 lines or about 700 lines. So a full field of view is 700 pixels across and 700 pixels up and down. Now, I should say that if you entered number of lines as one, you would get one pixel row that's 700 pixels across, meaning the x-axis number of pixels is fixed. This dimension is fixed. It will always be 700 pixels. And this center line, if you typed in one, it would just take a single frame of data exactly in the middle of the field of view and make one pixel row. And it builds this image from the middle out, meaning if I were to type in 101 lines, it would take the center row of data and then about 50 pixels above and 50 pixels below the image. So half a scan would be roughly 350, full scan would be roughly 700. There's a quick scan which just does 21 lines. This is designed just to, if you want to do a quick sample, because each one of these lines is an exposure. So if you have 21 lines here being captured, that's 21 images being taken at 400 milliseconds. So this scan is a progressive scan, meaning it's the stage is going to move and then stop, and the picture is going to be acquired. Data is going to be acquired, and then the stage will move a set number of microns or nanometers, and then another image will be taken and it will stitch these pixel rows together. So I'm going to demonstrate that here. I'm just going to do number of lines. I'm going to do just a couple hundred lines. I'm going to keep this exposure time. And it's important to note that when you change your exposure time and when you change the number of lines or change your field of view, you have to hit cancel for this to auto update. So now I'm going to hit preview again. And these particles look like they're in focus. I'll throw them out of focus and then back into focus here. And if you're in focus in the eyepiece of the microscope, meaning if you look in the microscope and everything looks in focus, 
it's going to be in focus in the scan, and I'm going to actually check. I'm going to look in the microscope here for a second and see how in focus this looks. Okay, these particles looked in focus. So I'm going to go ahead with the scan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, instead of cancel, I'm going to hit capture. When I do this, it says preparing to measure dark current block the illumination. What this means is the spectrograph and camera combination are want to measure what is dark in the microscope, meaning if you feed it no light whatsoever, what is that as a baseline, and then it's going to subtract that from the image. It's like uh, background subtraction. So I'm going to do this by pushing in the slide bar in the trinocular piece of the microscope all the way in. And when I do this, all of the light is blocked to the camera port. So now you're only able to see the sample through the eyepieces and not through the camera port. So it's going to take one dark current image from this, and then it's going to use this to automatically subtract from the scan. So I'm going to hit OK. It says, captured one dark current image. Please open aperture for slide image capture. So what this means is when you hit OK, the scan is going to start. So before you hit OK, you want to pull this slide bar in the trinocular piece all the way out. So now all of the light will be routed back to the spectrograph. So I always use this opportunity here before I hit OK to look into the microscope and make sure everything is in focus one last time because you don't want to wait maybe five or ten minutes if it's a long scan and find out that the image was out of focus because sometimes you can accidentally bump the microscope or the stage and it will throw the image out of focus just a little bit. So I'm going to check this right now. Okay, everything seems to be in focus still, so I'm going to pull the slide bar all the way out and hit OK. Now the scan has begun, and we see two windows show up. This one on the left is the spectrum, meaning these are the particles spectrum actually going by live as the stage is moving. The image on the right represents the 200 lines that are going to be scanned. And this actually shows the image being stitched together, meaning these green dots here are actually what the particles look like in the microscope. So when I look in the eyepiece, this is what the image actually looks like, and it's, it's building it. And so each one of these pixel rows, again, is about 700 pixels across. And this will be about 200 pixels high. So we have a 700 by 200 scan going on here. It's also important to remember that down here in the bottom left, it tells you what line the stage is currently on. As we see, it's going by 78, 79, 80, up to line 199 or 200. And one thing you might notice here is that the spectrum on the preview window at the bottom started at 400 nanometers and went up to 1,000 nanometers. This window is actually flipped. 400 nanometers is at the top, 1,000 nanometers is at the bottom. So I'm going to sort of jump ahead to where this scan will end so you don't have to sit here with me and wait for the next few minutes. But when the scan's over, we'll continue. So we see the scans winding down here. And when it gets done, it automatically opens in NV. And so what we see here in Envy are three windows. We see an image window, what's called a scroll window, and then a zoom window. And we also see the available bands list show up. This available bands list basically just shows you any file that's open in Envy. And if we expand it out, it shows you how many bands are how many spectral bands are associated with this file and where they are. So for example, this file has 1 to 470 bands, has 470 bands. Band 1 is at 400 nanometers, all the way down to band 70 to 1,000 nanometers. So here is the image window. The scroll window actually represents the entire image. 
So if I move this red box over to the right, we see it update here in the image window. I can get rid of this just simply by expanding the image window all the way out. So now there's no zoom window because, or no, excuse me, there's no scroll window because we're seeing the entire image. And so here, this is what the particles look like. This is exactly how they look like in the microscope too. We had some particles that were very small and green, and then we had some larger particles here that looked almost red or orange. This is probably due to aggregation. So I'm going to show you a couple of quick things about Envy, and there's going to be other webinars posted here um, describing some Envy basics and some other tools, but just to kind of give you an idea of what we're looking at, we can go to what's called the Enhance feature, and the Enhance feature basically shows the data in different ways. This is a linear data view. We have 0 to 255, which is more of like an 8-bit image. It defaults to linear 2%, so this is what it looked like when it opened. And then there's a couple of other ones, Gaussian and equalization. And then there's also square root. In this case, I think square root kind of looks more like it looks in the microscope. So here, if we just want to see some spectrum, we can right-click in any of the windows and pull up Z-Profile Spectrum. We can click anywhere and see the spectrum of this exact pixel. So here, this dark area in between, we're not getting much information. But when we get to a particle, we see. And here, this particle has a peak at about 564 nanometers. And I think in the preview window, I even mentioned earlier that a lot of these particles look like most of their information was concentrated in the 560 area. So this scan was was done nice because it's in focus. Nothing is out of focus. It's important to remember that when you're actually doing a scan, the scan is actually happening not to bump the table or the bench top that you're working on and to keep your hands free of anything on the desk because any small vibration can cause uh, these little wavy lines in the image. Uh, it's from the vibration. Also, I want to show you guys what the settings are. The settings menu is simple. It only has a few things. It has the X and Y stage communication port. On this system, it's COM3. On your system, it's probably COM3 as well. This is just a simulated COM port through a USB connection that makes the stage communicate with the computer. This should most likely never be changed as long as your system is running, cor running correctly. If you do have a problem with this communication port, please let us know. Camera gain is normal and enhanced NIR. This camera has a mode that can actually increase its gain and expand its sensitivity out in the near-infrared region, probably from about seven, 750 nanometers on out. It will increase the response of that area of the spectrum. So this is an option. So if you have some particles you know might have some spectral information out past the 700 nanometer range, you might want to engage this and see what the difference is between normal mode and enhanced NIR mode. The HSI image orientation, this is the way the image is displayed when it is done being scanned. Here we have the flip X checked. This is the default because when you look in the microscope, what you see on the left is actually what's on the left in this scan. The reason why flip X happens is because of the dual port on top of the trinocular head of the microscope actually flips the image to the spectrograph and camera combination. It flips that image in the X axis because of the mirror that's inside. So this simply flips the image back around to where what you see on the left in the microscope is on the left when the scan gets completed. If for some reason you ever mounted your spectrograph to the top of the microscope instead of the back of the dual camera port, let's say you wanted to, to move it to the top camera port, uh, you would not need the flip X. If this was checked in that case, it would be backwards. Spatial resolution high and low. I had mentioned binning before, the idea of taking a block of four pixels and making them one. 
Well, you can actually take the spatial resolution and get rid of that binning. So instead of a full scan being 700 pixels across, it can be 1,396 pixels. So if I switch this to high and hit close, now a full scan jumps up to 1,392 pixels, not 96, 92. And a half will go down to 697. So you're just increasing the spatial area of what's getting scanned. So I hope that was helpful, and I hope that you guys are able to acquire some hyperspectral data. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email us at support at cytoviva.com. Thank you.